6 o'clock news starts right now and conviction overturned a Texas criminal court of appeals clearing former Bear County Constable Michelle Buddy at this Vela of two counts of tampering with records. The case that investigates has extensively covered her criminal case since the very beginning of her troubled time in office. As a law professor tells our Daniela Ibarra, he says this isn't necessarily the end of this. A new ruling gives a once convicted ex constable the chance to rise from her downfall. Bear County prosecutors accused former Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela of presenting Rodriguez Park security cash logs she knew were false. Two years ago, they convinced a Bear County jury to convict her on two felony counts of tampering with records. A judge sentenced Barrientes Vela to five years probation, 90 days in jail, and 600 hours of community service. A Thursday ruling from Chief Justice Jeff Alley of Texas's 8th District Court of Appeals threw that out. This is um, a rare thing for our appellate courts to reverse and actually enter a finding of not guilty or acquitting the person. Stephanie Stevens is a law professor at St. Mary's University. She read through Alley's ruling. He lays out why he doesn't believe there's enough evidence to support Barrientes Vela's conviction. What does this ruling say about the prosecution? Well, I think it says that they need to be more careful with how they uh, treat a person. They simply charged her with an offense they couldn't prove. What happens next with this case? Well, the state has the right to ask the Eighth Circuit to reconsider their opinion. They call it a motion for rehearing, and they have 15 days to file that motion. For Case That Investigates, I'm Danielle Ibarra. By the way, we've reached out to the Bear County District Attorney's Office three times today. We've asked if they intend to file an appeal in this case and for their reaction to the ruling. We're still waiting to hear back. Two bodies in four days found at a downtown public housing complex for seniors and disabled tenants. Both cases are apparent homicides. San Antonio police responded to the Victoria Plaza apartments on Barrera Street today, a few blocks south of the Tower of the Americas for a person found dead in an apartment there. Family identified him as 52-year-old Donnell Sterling, a cook and father of four. It wasn't clear how long he may have been dead. His mother last talked with him via text message last Thursday. When I was in town, uh, I talked to him every day. almost every day. Mm -hmm. So this was unusual. Right, so I've been trying to call him ever since Saturday when I got back. Well, Sunday I tried to call him. On Tuesday, another man, 59-year-old Nick Martinez, was found dead a few apartments down from the victim today. The medical examiner's office says that he died from sharp force injury. The Public Housing Authority, Opportunity Home, formerly known as Saha, said it's now reviewing its security measures at that complex. A Comal ISD teacher now facing charges after she allegedly had an improper relationship with a student. According to the Comal County Sheriff's Office, 51-year-old Jennifer Massey, a teacher at Davenport High School. Deputies arrested Massey yesterday after she was found at a home with an underage boy. She's now being charged with improper relationship between educator and student. Massey placed on administrative leave this morning. In a letter sent to Davenport High School parents, Principal Angela Looney said in part, quote, the safety and security of our students is one of our highest priorities and responsibility that we take seriously, end quote. This is still an ongoing investigation. Two people arrested during a big drug bust in a San Antonio neighborhood now facing federal charges. Yeah, a team led by the Bear County Sheriff's Office rounded up that couple along with millions of dollars worth of methamphetamine. That's what you're seeing right here. Cocaine and cash also taken. Still, Katrina Weber shows us why neighbors say they feel even more unsafe right now. They had no words as they were let off in handcuffs. 38-year-old Isaac Martinez Mendez and Alicia Dominguez Garcia, who turns 39 next week, were in trouble that quickly became a federal case. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar showed off the reason why to reporters Thursday. What he valued at $2.5 million worth of methamphetamine, along with cocaine and lots of cash. He says investigators found it while raiding the couple's home on Fitch Street, not far from West South Cross. The initial find is that there was a, a, a Pampers box that this stuff was hidden in. He says that initial find actually was in a car. 
Detectives discovered it during a traffic stop on Martinez Mendez, then went to the home where he says they hit pay dirt. Because of the high value of the drugs, so much found all at one time, we can assume that there's, there's going to be cartel ties. In the neighborhood Friday morning, there was a whole different scene. The patrol cars were gone and life appeared almost back to normal. Whatever was happening in that house flew under the radar for some neighbors. Others say they had a feeling something wasn't quite right. But with the possible connection to cartels, no one wanted to talk about it on camera. Every neighbor who I spoke to told me the arrests have made them more fearful. Some say previously they looked at the couple as part of an ordinary family. Now they're worried they may belong to a crime family. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In today, county officials encouraging people to get out and vote in the November election. This morning, Judge Peter Sakai said so far there's a record number of registered voters in Bear County. He says there are 90,000 more registered voters than there were in 2020. Elections office has announced that a record 1.28 million Bear County residents have registered to vote uh, as of this past Monday. And those numbers obviously will continue. That is the most ever at this time. It'd be great if they all got out and voted. Here are a few deadlines ahead of Election Day. The deadline to register to vote is this Monday. You can check to see if you're registered on the county's website. We also have steps on how to register on KSAT.com. Early voting, by the way, begins on October 21st. Election Day, Tuesday, November 5th. Looking ahead to next week, KSAT 12 will be hosting a town hall about cancer in the Latino community. That's on Tuesday. That town hall is called Revolutionizing Cancer Care for South Texas, a new era of treatment. Stefania Jimenez will host that discussion starting at 2 p.m. We'll be live streaming it on all of our digital platforms. Visit KSAT.com for some more information. Celebrate, honor, and remember people impacted by blood cancer. Join us at Hemisphere Park on October 19th for Light the Night. Hundreds of lanterns will illuminate the sky with honor and hope. KSAT reporter Daniela Ibarra will MC that opening ceremony. We hope to see you there. Check out Trans Guide right now, and it looks like we're going to head to I-10 in Hildebrand. And you can see one of the lanes is closed down there. I think it's some sort of construction project. I know there is as you get farther towards downtown. A lot of construction going on, especially on the upper levels, the upper ramps there. Again, this is I-10 at Hildebrand. I believe we're looking towards downtown with this shot. All right, we're looking ahead to the weekend. What we have in store there. What's going on behind you there, Adam? Is that some rain? Uh, yeah, it's along the Gulf Coast. It's not for us, unfortunately. We could have one or two brief showers pop up tomorrow throughout the day, but most of it's going to be east and far south of San Antonio. So a little bit working its way in Victoria, Goliad, Beeville, even into Live Oak County and especially point southward. We switch over to the Corpus Christi Authority radar and you can see a lot more activity here from Corpus Christi headed toward Freer and even Laredo area and then all the way down through the valley. That's where the action's mostly going to be. We have some upper level energy over northern Mexico and that's helping to bring in some of this moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. But unfortunately, we also have a weak upper high that's pushing against it and preventing a lot of that moisture from really making it here into our neck of the woods. By 8 o'clock, 86, 10 o'clock, 81, midnight, we're at 78. And just east north, east, east northeasterly wind, around 10 miles per hour. Happy Friday. An area of uh, potential development in the Gulf and where that's going in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. Helene leaving in its wake a staggering death toll. At least 215 people killed since the storm made landfall last Thursday. Those pictures are unbelievable yeah. of all that damage. ABC's Alexis Christophorus reports that that death toll, though, could continue to rise. Rescuers are just now finally making their way into some of the hardest hit areas, searching for people who are still unaccounted for. Search crews are combing through the remote mountains in western North Carolina, hoping to locate those still missing and those in need of supplies. 
Teams from across the country helping with those search and rescue efforts. Private helicopter companies stepping in to deliver much needed aid, including food, water, fuel, and over 100 donated Starlink satellite units. We've just been distributing them to local fire departments who we know have been isolated with no comms, and it's fantastic. In Asheville, the North Carolina National Guard working nonstop to deliver supplies to residents. ABC's Morgan Norwood is there. These guardsmen have been working round the clock to help get aid into the disaster zone, but with so many roads closed, there's only so far they can go. Duke Energy says they have repaired more than a million power outages in North Carolina, but about 170,000 customers in the mountains are still without power. We're committed to continuing safe, safe restoration until everyone's power is restored. Duke says they're dealing with unprecedented damage. Think about where uh, power lines are normally located. There are easements along those roadways. Those easements are gone. This substation in Swannanoa buried under the debris. If we go down a little further, you see a an 18 wheeler cargo container wrapped around one of our transmission towers. Much of the small town, about 20 miles east of Asheville, washed away. Homes flattened, businesses destroyed, roads impassable. FEMA has launched a web page dedicated to pushing back against misinformation about the federal government's response to Helene. The agency tackling rumors like one claiming it doesn't have enough money for disasters, which FEMA insists it does. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. You still ahead on the news at six. It is Friday night football, a live look at Heroes Stadium where we've got a great matchup between Johnson and Roosevelt streaming on KSAT.com and KSAT Plus tonight. We've got a preview of the game coming up a little bit later in this show. And after the break, drought conditions still hurting a lot of parts of the hill country, but that's not the case here in Fredericksburg. Up next, we take you to a local winery there to see how the recent rains have led to some good grape harvests this season. But first, let's take a live look outside live cam. Some development in the Gulf right now. Meteorologist Adam Kasky tracking it. Here's the latest coming up. Homelessness is an issue all across Bear County, but one city is putting an emphasis on outreach. Coming up tonight in the night beat, we'll tell you where that's happening and we'll take you behind the scenes. Parts of the hill country still in drought, leaving many people wishing for some more rain. But if you drive a little farther north, you'd find that drought ends right before reaching Fredericksburg, which is where wineries are reporting strong grape harvests following the spring and summer rains. Yeah, I mean, looks great. Meteorologist Mia Montgomery visited one winery to get a first-hand look at how that rain has benefited their operations this season. Since March, we've had about 15 inches. Um, during the ripening season, we did get rain roughly almost every 10 days. So, you know, it does help to keep the vines hydrated. Augusta Vin is one of the many unique Fredericksburg wineries you can find in the heart of the Texas Hill Country. Gillespie County saw several rounds of beneficial rain earlier this spring and summer, something that head winemaker Zachary Rains says was key to this season's grape harvest. And when it comes to seeing how the rain benefits your harvest, does it help more so on the quantity side or the quality side, or is it a mixture of both? Uh, I would say it's probably a mixture of both. If we get good rain early on, which we which we did this year, we had a nice wet early season. Things were a couple weeks ahead um, of typical schedule. It takes about seven months for a grape to grow. That process usually starts in February when the vines come out of dormancy. After ripening through early summer, they are then ready to be picked from late July through September. So the grapes have already been harvested, Correct. but these are still the vines in place. Correct. So we'll continue to fertilize, we'll continue to water the vines long after they've been harvested. Much of what the, the vine intakes this year will uh, reflect how the vine grows next year. Another added benefit of rain, a brief stretch of lower temperatures, which was a welcome change compared to last year when Fredericksburg experienced its third hottest summer on record. In comparison to like last year, you know, we had that heat dome that was, 
I believe it was 50, 60 days of over 100 degrees. Yes. We just didn't quite have that heat this year. And that was a that was a benefit, you okay. know, is that the vines aren't shutting down. While this year's fruitful harvest will head to barrel for a few years, there's still plenty to celebrate at Augusta Vin this year. A brand new tasting room just opened to the public and a new bottle will be available for a very special occasion. We're really excited about our fifth anniversary blend. Uh, Augusta Vin just turned five this year, so we had to put a wine together. A special edition bottle to commemorate half of a decade serving Texas Hill Country wines amplified this year by a few rounds of beneficial rain. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Just wish I could have been there to help Mia with yeah. that story. You know, yeah. just to, she did great, but teamwork is just so essential. I, I think so. And I think if we ever go to Shiner to the brewery, I probably need to help out too. Yeah, I think so. You know, I'll be there with you. Yeah. Just, we'll make a note of that for next time. Yeah. Right? And it's, I mean, timing is very critical when it comes to some crops. Oh, know, yeah, especially, especially grapes. Yeah, when you're talking about grapevines. Yes. Yeah. The timing of the rain, the heat, the cooler temperatures, critical. And uh, that's one reason why you can get such a variety of flavors from year to year. And the terroir. Huh? What? Oh, that's just like local conditions, like your soil and stuff and how it varies from. I could go on. There's been some studies done with uh, hops to brew beer. The exact same genetic strain planted in Washington State and Germany. They're uh, genetically identical, but tasted very different because of the terroir. I thought we That's were talking a, I'm about moving on by that word. I thought we were talking about wine. Yeah. Let's move. I on. thought maybe you heard that through the grapevine. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. Graphics, please. Thank you. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, 70 degrees by noon or at 86, 92 in the afternoon. You see that 20% chance of a shower. It will be in the low 90s just about everywhere. An exception, Carrizo Spring at 94 and Del Rio 94, but Fredericksburg 88 tomorrow. Kerrville 89 and not too humid either. A hint of humidity, especially early, but nothing significant. Sunday, 94 degrees and that's one degree shy of the record for the day and northeasterly wind at 10 miles per hour both days. I mentioned the records. Sunday is going to be a record challenging day. We're predicting to be one degree shy of it, but obviously it's within reach. Tuesday and Wednesday, mid 90s, that takes us into record challenging territory. But notice those morning temperatures by next Wednesday and especially Thursday drop off a bit into the low to mid 60s. So there will be some more comfortable mornings on the way. Let's get to the future cast in this computer model here. I think it's a decent representation of uh, what's potential or what's possible as we get into tomorrow. But most of the rain should be along the Gulf Coast line and especially in an area from Laredo to Corpus Christi southward to Brownsville. That's where most of the rain is going to be, but we could still have a few of these showers pop up in parts of our area and even in and around San Antonio Bear County. There's a chance one or two little showers could briefly develop tomorrow. Just don't don't count on it. OK, we're mostly just going to have a mixture of sun and clouds. As I mentioned before, we've got the disturbance here. The upper level low over northern Mexico, helping to lift the air, give us some energy and also pull some of this moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico. But these weak upper highs are pushing against it and preventing this disturbance of just throwing those clouds and all that moisture and some rain up our way. So unfortunately, we have these competing forces. We're also keeping an eye on this broad cluster of unorganized thunderstorms in the western Gulf of Mexico. Hurricane Center is up the chances of this developing into the next tropical depression, and it's at 50% right now. Even if it does develop into something, even if it doesn't, and the unorganized rain that we could use, it's all going to be pushed eastward. The steering flow is going to take it to Florida, and that's where Florida could get several inches of rain from this next week. And you look at the rainfall potential because of that area of disturbed weather over the Gulf slowly pushing eastward. All the rain is over the Gulf and even Florida, where parts of Florida could see six to 10 inches of rain, and they're not even in a drought. That's the type of tropical system I'm talking about that we could use around here to help mitigate our drought situation. Again, 92 tomorrow, northeasterly wind at 10, that 20% chance of a shower. And then next week, some record challenging warmth. Actually, that starts on Sunday. Terroir. Terroir. <laughs> Terroir. Okay. Yeah, we know. Pair it with your amuse bouche. <laughs> now we're just saying words. Yeah, no, pretty much. Yeah. He's just being fancy. <laughs> we'll be right back.
San Antonio man running across the country to raise money and awareness to help people struggling with substance abuse. Kenneth Anderlich started his journey on September 20th, running from Washington, D.C. to San Antonio. As Stephanie Cerna tells us, this journey, it's close to home for him. He's been running every day, averaging about 40 miles a day, as Kenneth Anderlich makes his way back to San Antonio, all the way from Washington, D.C. I'm just a little tired just from the natural progression from this, but I mean, overall, I feel like it, we're going the right direction. Kenneth, who has been down the path of addiction and understands the struggles of substance abuse, has leaned on running as an important component of his own recovery. He's now running to raise money for a first of its kind center for those seeking treatment so they don't have to worry about being separated from their children. Sometime in 2025, hopefully, that there is a facility that's uh, open for families that are predominantly needing recovery. That there's a big need in our community for a place where families can be in recovery while staying with their children. Kenneth's mother also struggled with addiction and died of an overdose when he was 20 years old. Having a mom who I lost through addiction, she would have probably never would have picked treatment if it meant for her to be away from us. In between running, Kenneth has been meeting with different nonprofits in the recovery industry the homeless industry, trying to get the word out about how important these recovery programs are for people who are struggling. He wants to not only create the awareness about the program here in San Antonio, but he's hoping in the communities he's running through, he can raise that awareness as well. It is an illness and it's something that it can be treated if, if you continue to work with that person. You know, how to tackle this problem without the judgment. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Breaking down some stereotypes there. All right, happening tonight at 7.30, we have a big 6A matchup between the Johnson Jaguars and the Roosevelt Rough Riders streaming on KSAT.com and on KSAT+. Plus. And coming up in a few minutes, we have our KSAT game day pregame show to get you ready for tonight. So let's go live out to Hero Stadium where Larry Ramirez, Mary Rominger are hosting tonight's coverage. Hi, y'all. Hey guys, thank you very much. So Mary, I'm going to start off talking about Roosevelt just for a few seconds. So they're 1-3, 0-1 in district, but their losses this year have come against Smithson Valley, East Central, and the Reagan Rattlers. That's three ranked teams. I mean, Roosevelt's record this year, Mary, has been brutal. Yes, and on the other side, Johnson is 1-0 in district play mm -hmm. so far. Um, they put up 56 points against Roosevelt when they met last yep. year, but that was with Ty Hawkins at quarterback, <laughs> their old quarterback. Now they have Elvis Estrada leading the way, and Estrada last week led his team over Brandeis in triple overtime to victory where he completed 13 passes for 113 yards. We'll see what he's able to do this time. That's right. Hey, one thing, Elvis never leaves the building. <laughs> Guys, we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome live to Hero Stadium. It's the site for tonight's KSAT game day stream between Roosevelt and Johnson. Hero Stadium has been the home to so many great games, and the feeling in the air is just right for another fantastic showdown. And there are the Roosevelt Rough Riders. They're in the house after coming up 410 and 35, jumping over to Thousand Oaks, a short drive from campus as Roosevelt looks to get a win, coming off a very tough loss, Mary. And here are the Johnson Jaguars. They had a longer commute coming all the way down Bulverde Road. Johnson is coming off back to back wins and are working to make it three straight tonight. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I am Larry. She is Mary. So this is KSAT game day. It's going to be an awesome night for KSAT game day and big game coverage. So this Johnson Roosevelt game, Mary, we're going to stream it live on the BGC app. Can't wait. And of course, over the next 30 minutes, we're going to get you ready for this matchup. And this game isn't the only game that KSAT 12 Sports is covering tonight. We'll show you our full list of games later in the show. But first, let's get to know Johnson and Roosevelt a little bit more. All right, so we're going to start off with Roosevelt. First, 
All right, they have moved along with Johnson from 28-6A to 27-6A this year. The Rough Riders were 6-4 and four last year and 4-4 four and four in district play. Roosevelt has a new head coach with Darnell Barnes. He has 30 returning lettermen in 2024 with 8 starters in offense, 7 on defense. This season, Roosevelt got shut out in their opening game, the Smithson Valley 45-0, then lost to East Central before getting their first win of the season on September 12th, 27-23 in a close game against Judson at Rutledge Stadium. So what's the message to the team after dropping their district opener last week? Uh, we're, we're not ducking or running from any opponent. Um, we know that we didn't play our best game, so our practice uh, tempo and intensity has picked up um, because we want to put a better product on the field this Friday. Just coming off that last game, you know, it was a very hard-fought game. Um, we just have to learn that we got to stay together, you know, um, regardless of what the score is or how the outcome of the game is, you know, we got to come back the next day, watch film, you know, and just speak about the mistakes. But anything can happen, you know. Uh, we've been studying film for a couple of days now. Ever since uh, the loss to Reagan, it's just been nonstop. Just already on to the next, so we're ready. Yes, sir. Now for Johnson, they were 10 and 2 last year while going 7 and 1 in 28-6A. The Jaguars made it to the second round of the playoffs in 2023 before losing to Austin Lake Travis and San Marcos 48 to 21. This would have marked the third year in a row. Quarterback Ty Hawkins would have started, but he transferred out of state this offseason. He was a big part of this team. However, the Jags have adjusted to their new starting QB, Elvis Estrada. He and his squad just outlasted Brandeis 21 to 19 in triple overtime at Ferris Stadium. Yeah, it was it was crazy, but I'm just glad we came out with the win and we found a way as a team to win. It was exciting because like even though we didn't play great, we came out with the win, which is the most important thing. And we just worked as a team all phases of the game and you know came out the victory. You know, every week, every week is a new challenge. Um, you know, obviously our, our team is different. Our identity of the, our team is different and we're growing and we're learning every week to week. But it was uh, really great to see them come together and persevere. Johnson was predicted to finish second in the district, according to Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. All right, here is your matchup. It's the one and three Roosevelt Rough Riders and the three and one Johnson Jaguars. They kick off at 7:30 tonight. We'll have the highlights tonight on the night beat. Now we are just getting started with our pregame coverage special, KSAT Game Day. Mary, what do we have next? Well. We already heard of what uh, both teams uh, have been all about, but now moving forward, what their game plan is <laughs> to get the W tonight. We'll also go live out to Catula, where Nick Mantis will give you a preview of the BGC road trip this week. KSAT 12 Sports has more of your Friday night coverage when we come back. And welcome back live to Hero Stadium as Roosevelt and Johnson continue to get ready for tonight's matchup, Mary. And you've already heard how the seasons are going for both clubs entering tonight, but as for their game plan for this game. All right, let's start off with <laughs> Roosevelt once again. So they faced Reagan this past Saturday right here at Hero Stadium. The Rattlers came out victorious 31-7 in that district opener. In fact, Roosevelt has played here twice this season, and both games resulted in a loss for the Rough Riders. So what can they expect Friday, and what needs to change? to avoid going one and four to start the season. I know they got some cats over there. They got some good, uh, good, good coaches, good, good players over there. But you know, they're just another team on our on our list, and we just going out there to compete. Uh, more excited, excited for real, because second game it's a district, and keep get that sour taste out of our mouth, and ready to win. You know, we got we got we got one of the toughest districts in the city. So you know, just going game by game and just being able to be prepared. We we've got to take care of the football. We've we've got to um, we've got to score. We, we, we've got to do a little bit better on offense, and um, that's what we're working on this week. Taking care of the football, sustaining drives. Um, and and once again, being solid in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. The Johnson Jaguars are 3-1 and one coming into tonight's matchup. The Jags have won four in a row against the Rough Riders, with Roosevelt's last win coming in 2019. This will be the first time QB Elvis Estrada leads his squad against Roosevelt. So how has the sophomore performed so far this season on varsity? I'm proud of my sophomore QB. This is his first year playing in varsity, and he's been doing pr very good, in my opinion. 
and I'm just trying to do my best to make it easy on him. Elvis has uh, improved week to week, um, and, it, and it's credit to the offense coordinator, Coach Burrow, and you know the players behind him executing and helping him and build his confidence um, and taking a load off his plate and giving the ball out to to like a running back like Bubba, Gabe, and, and Bryson, and Jaden, and Aaron Crawford, just all those guys in the, up front, the offensive line, and Josh McNeil, Austin Kula. So it's just confidence, and he's growing week to week, and we're excited about his future. We're getting closer and closer, less than 50 minutes away from kickoff here at Heroes Stadium. Remember, you can see this game on the KSAT BGC app, KSAT.com, and KSAT Plus. We'll have the highlights tonight on the Night Beats. Hopefully have those kids prepared to the best of their ability and, and try to come out with a win. What do you guys need to do in order to be ready for a team like Stockdale? We need to come out and play our best game. And coming up after the break, we'll check in with our Nick Mantis, who will be live from Catula. Find out who else will be featured for tonight's BGC road trip. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back with more KSAT game day and big game coverage. We got here just in the nick of time to help push things on to the field for the halftime show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This way? Right here? First. Weenie's done. All righty. We'll get these going. Yeah. Hot dogs first. Yeah. That's where you make sure that you have the odor on. He moves fast. I'm going to let him do it. I can't do it. I'm going to let him do it. Oh, man. I mean, that nick of time segment just keeps getting better and better and better, if I may say so myself. And wait till you see what we got into already tonight. And we got a ton of stuff going on this evening, including what's going on right here at Myers Memorial Stadium. Escatula has its district home opener against an incredible team that they're going to be going up against tonight. It's going to be a tough, tough task when it comes to this game. Even though Catula is 3-1, and one, you think they're probably sitting pretty good. They've already faced a ton of adversity. Family. Family always sticks together no matter what. And that's what we preach every, every day at practice. Family on me, family on three. We're all going to be here for each other. This is brotherhood when it comes to football. From off-season injuries to suspensions due to a scuffle, the Catula Cowboys football family has gone through a lot. But these Cowboys take pride in attacking adversity. I feel like it's because we're from South Texas and like especially from this little town, just it's just kind of it's something we all we all deal with. It's kind of just just a little something and we just got to push through it like always. I like that we didn't complain about our setbacks. We didn't make excuses. We came out, we played our game and that's really all we need to do to keep to keep this season rolling. You know, kind of what we've preached in the past is just next man up mentality, man. We don't make excuses. I'm going to give you the best I have, you know, whether it's a JV kid, whether it's, you know, a freshman, we, we, we're not going to make excuses. We're going to show up Friday, you know, and hopefully have those kids prepared to the best of their ability and, and try to come out with a win. What do you guys need to do in order to be ready for a team like Stockdale? We need to come out and play our best game. I know know that if we execute the game plan that our coaches have given us, we'll be able to take care of business. That offense is not designed to be pretty and flashy. You know, it's three yards, four yards in a cloud of dust. So our biggest thing is just, you know, get the ball early, often, and try to sustain some drives to keep their offense off the field. Coach Alvarez out there in Stockdale, he's done a great job in year one, man. And, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited for the opportunity. I don't think we've played Stockdale since I was back, you know, back in school. It's been some time. So um, we're, we're definitely looking forward to the matchup. Now, well, it's going to be a fun matchup, to say the least. And from here, we're heading over to where seventh-ranked Divine is hosting Marble Falls. Then wrapping up tonight's BGC road trip in Natalia, who's taken on Carn City. Well, this is just a taste of what KSAT 12 does each and every week when it comes to our high school sports. Make sure you watch tonight for all the highlights and more scores from around our viewing area. Then Sundays during instant replay, we got the best of big game coverage in 12's top 12. Make sure you join us every Sunday starting at 11 p.m. right after the night beat. And that's going to wrap it up for myself and Photog Eddie Latigo from right here in Katula. We're going to have the highlights from the road trip, including just in the nick of time. And we'll see you guys at 10 o'clock, but stay right here because we have more from Hero Stadium in just a moment. What's going on, everybody? It's KSAT Big Game Coverage. Tonight, we got the Johnson Jags. 
Let's go, Johnson! Versus the Roosevelt Rough Riders. Let's go, Roosevelt! Let's go, Roosevelt! This is an N-E-I-S-D showdown, but it's so much more than a district matchup. It's Johnson's homecoming night. The Jags are trying to run off the field with a dub and then go dance the night away. How important is it to win tonight? It's really important for us because a win sets us up for a good homecoming weekend and puts us all in good spirits to start. Awesome stuff. Mums are king when it comes to homecoming. They look bigger every year. What's a must have when it comes to mums? All the ribbons on our mums tell like a little story about what we do and what clubs we're a part of. So it's really important to have those. They look absolutely amazing, but the Rough Riders are not worried about mums right now. They're trying to spoil the night. How sweet would it be to take away their homecoming? Although we really would like to win, I don't really think that we would want to completely ruin their homecoming. I hope the dance goes well and, you know, best of luck for them, but it would be pretty sweet. <laughs> that was the nicest trash talk I've ever heard. Talk to me about the swag real quick. It's the pink out game. Yes, so pink out is to represent like breast cancer awareness and we'll wear all our pink stuff all month long until October ends. Awesome stuff, guys. It's big game coverage. We're going to have the games live streamed on the BGC app, KSAT Plus, and KSAT.com. We're at Hero Stadium. There could be a hero on the field tonight, so you're not going to want to miss it. Kickoff's at 730, guys. Right now, we're going to toss it back to KSAT's biggest touchdown threat, Adam Kasky. <laughs> I love the sportsmanship out there. That's good to see. No rain threat for the games tonight. It, closer to the Gulf Coast, that's where we have a few of the showers popping up. And they're even brief as it is. It's basically between Laredo, Corpus Christi, and Brownsville. That's where the Friday night football games will be impacted and down in the valley, of course. Temperature-wise, we're right near 90, give or take. Bulverde's 88. Downtown, or I should say at the airport, officially 90 degrees, but Converse 92 and Port SA at 93. We're going to see those temperatures quickly fall off because of this dry air that's in place. Dew points in the 40s and 50s, so it feels comfortable outside. Different story farther east of town where you actually feel the mugginess. A gentle breeze out of the east at 10 miles per hour. That can be expected to persist through the games this evening and then simmer down later on tonight. By 8 o'clock, 86 degrees. By 10 o'clock, we're right near 80. And at midnight, we're at 78. Rain chances going forward, pretty slim for us around San Antonio. As I said before, most of it Gulf Coastline down in the Rio Grande Valley over toward Laredo, and some could develop in and around our area here around San Antonio and Bear County. Don't expect it, but if you do get a quick shower, just consider yourself very lucky. There is that outside chance, that possibility, not a probability. 70 degrees in the morning tomorrow, 92 in the afternoon, a 20% chance, 20% may even be a little generous, of a brief stray shower near 70 Sunday morning, 94 in the afternoon. That's actually going to be record challenging. The record high is 95 on Sunday. So we're going to be within reach of that. And again into next week, mid 90s for highs. Tuesday and Wednesday will be days to watch for the record for potential record tying or breaking high temperatures. But notice those mornings back down low to mid 60s middle of next week. So it will feel a little more pleasant around sunrise later next week. We'll be back with more in just a bit. And welcome back live to Hero Stadium, everybody. We are just over 30 minutes away from kickoff between Johnson and Roosevelt. And that means it's time to wrap things up. We have to get back to the studio and <laughs> yep. get ready for the night beat. But first, here are the games we'll be covering this evening. That's right, Mary. We have number 10 East Central, number one Steel for our game of the week. Both teams are four and one, so that one should be a good one. We'll also have Holmes and Sotomayor from Ferris, Stevens and Warren from Gustafson. McCollum takes on Veterans and Mora out at Rutledge. Brandeis and Lee face off at Comalander. Alamo Heights will be at Harlandale. Jefferson and Burbank will be at Alamo Stadium. Dilly and YMLA will be at SAISD Sports Complex. Uvalde will be at Somerset tonight. Southside and Southwest face off this evening and Davenport will play Kennedy at Edgewood, Mary. And don't forget to join us for our next pregame stream, which will be Friday, October 25th, when Uvalde and Davenport 
Faceoff. Remember, you can catch these games live on the BGC app. And coming up this Sunday, make sure to join us on Instant Replays. We recap the start of Spurs training camp, and we'll have all your highlights and post-game coverage from the Texans and Bills and the Cowboys at the Steelers. Don't miss any of the best sports show in town Sunday nights on Instant Replay. And that's going to do it for us here at Heroes Stadium. Um, enjoy the game tonight, everybody. And remember that you can see Johnson and Roosevelt streaming at KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and the BGC app. And join us on the night feed to see who comes out victorious. You don't want to miss it. There will be lots of good stuff to look forward to. It all starts at 10. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night, and it's a beautiful night to enjoy some football. Absolutely. We'll <laughs> see you all on the night feed.